<clears throat> okay, so while Fred Orlowski is connecting to the audio, um, my name is Deborah Carney. I'm going to be the acting chair for the zoning board tonight. And voting member will be Kristen Vivon and also Fred Orlowski. Roger Lipton, our chair, is here for his advice and counsel, but he is serving as an alternate tonight. Um, so we know our first hearing at 640 is the Toro Verde application. And um, are the folks who are going to present that with us tonight? We are. Okay, great. Um, I can certainly share the screen and bring up the documents that are on our website, or I'm happy to make one of you a co-host um, once we get started. So you can decide that before we read the legal notice. If you make me a co-host, I'll be able to share share the screen. Perfect. I, I may be already. It looks like I could share the screen now. I don't think you can unless okay. I make you a co-host. All right, great. Which you are, but before you do anything... Um, we'd like to ask our secretary, Mary McCarthy, to read the legal notice, please. Legal notice, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 4th, 2023 at 6.40 p.m., on March 28th, Toro Verde, Toro Verde, Massachusetts, three incorporated, applied for a special permit to make use of an existing commercial storefront for retail sale of adult use marijuana on premises located at 424 State Road, Sugarloaf Shops, the former tenant, uh, unit A1 and owned by Old State Road, LLC. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom the rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect, and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Whateley Zoning Bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A. The notice, this notice is also published electronically <clears throat> on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. And it then gives the meeting ID passcode and the access computer link, plus the phone numbers for joining by phone. Signed, Deborah Carney, Acting Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals. And this ran in the, the Recorder newspaper of Greenfield on April 20th and 27th. Thank you, Mary. Just making a note of that. Um, Mr. Silverman, did you notice any errors or omissions in that? I did not. Okay. So if you would like to make your presentation to us, um, the floor is yours. That, that's great. My name's Phil Silverman. I'm here for Nectarize. And, and also uh, Taylor Lovejoy is here and he represents uh, Toro Verde, Toro Verde Holdings. And I'll sort of explain who we all are and how it all fits together as, as I go through. So um, I'm going to share the screen now for a minute. And can everybody see that? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. So yeah, we're here for uh, what, what this is, is we're seeking a, it's technically a renewal of a special permit to operate a marijuana retailer at 424 State Road uh, unit one, uh, unit A1. And, and this may sound familiar uh, to the extent that you've been on the board for a little while, because back in January 2019, um, you had granted a uh, special permit to Toro Verde, Massachusetts 3 to operate uh, a marijuana retailer here. And since that time, uh, Toro Verde, Massachusetts 3 has built out uh, the facility and gone through a lot of its licensing. And quite frankly, the, the facility is probably ready to open within about two or three months. Okay. Um, but uh, it, it, what's, what's gone on now is my client, Nectarize, has actually come in and is purchasing uh, ownership of Toro Verde 3. So effectively, there was a, a prior owner called Toro Verde Holdings. They are selling to Nectarize. Nectarize will hold Toro Verde 3. And Toro Verde 3 is the one that is seeking renewal 
of the special permit. And the reason for that is under your zoning bylaw, it says that if you change ownership, more than 10% ownership uh, in a marijuana company um, in the town, that the old special permit lapses and you have to get a renewed special permit. And that's what we're here doing tonight. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to sort of belabor the points because I think the board has sort of been through this, but I'll give you a little bit of a sort of a reminder of, of what you approved before. Um, I think you're familiar with the site. Uh, I guess it was formerly known as the Sugarloaf Shops. Um, it is. It has a provisional license with the Cannabis Control Commission, and as I said, it's on its way to getting what's called a final license. Uh, those interior renovations are complete, and we're we're looking forward to some additional inspections uh, coming up. Um, there's really nothing about this facility that's going to be particularly different than a retailer, which I think you've already approved and is already in operation. They're all very similar in terms of you know, same types of security, cam, all of the cameras, access controls, uh, you know, alarms, uh, that's all in accordance with CCC standards. It's sort of, you know, very stringent, among the most stringent security measures in the country in terms of marijuana companies, we'll be abiding by those as well. Um, and the same operational procedures um, that, that you would have seen in, in that other facility as well. Here's the site. I think you're familiar with the site. Again, don't want to belabor it, but there's, you know, plenty of parking here, um, good access to it. We uh, really do expect that the company um, is, is going to bring additional business uh, to the area from this. Our, our operator, um, uh, PJ Patel, he's actually on here. He's on the road, so he's, he's not on camera right now, uh, but he is here, uh, uh, you know, to the extent that there might be any questions. And again, the floor plan, just like uh, other marijuana retailers, in order to get into this facility, this is not like a pharmacy, not like a liquor store where you can just walk in. You know, before you set one foot inside this facility, you're showing ID to prove you're over 21 years of age. You then get buzzed into the sales area and you, uh, you know, uh, talk to the agent about your purchase and, you um, uh, you know, your purchase is filled, you have to show that ID a second time, just so we're sure again that you're 21 years of age. Um, and uh, then then you're free to, to leave the premises. Um, you know, we've talked about already the proposed ownership, you know, what the 100% of the ownership of Toro Verde 3 is going to be uh, going over to Nectarize. And uh, that closing will be following, uh, hopefully, approval of the special permit probably within the next couple of weeks. So this is all scheduled to happen uh, pretty quickly. You hold that screen, actually, go back to that screen for a minute. Sure. Attorney sure. Sorenman. Of course. Okay. Just so that I can maybe highlight for our board members that something that may seem obvious to some of us, but not to all of us. Okay. So I like, the, I like your designation TV3. It's easy to say. So the current license is held by TV3, correct? Correct. All right. And the petitioner is still the same TV3, correct? It is. All right. And then within the corporation, there are shares. And um, the new owner, Nectarize, is going to be owning the shares that had previously been owned by <clears throat> what was called Toro Verde Holdings Inc. Have I got that correct? You do. Yeah. All right. So it's it's basically for us board members, it's a transfer internally of the shares of the corporation, and both CCC and and our uh, bylaw requires action by our board when those shares are being transferred, even though to the outside. It's still TV3. So you might say, well, why, is, why do we have to do anything? It's TV3, TV3. But the answer is because those shares are being transferred. And just like in the liquor license uh, field, the state authorities want to see who those holders of the shares are because they could be crooks, they could be gangsters, mobsters, what have you. And so there's a, a close look at who those shareholders are. Okay, I think that's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Mr. Lipton. You're doing my job for me. I okay. appreciate it. No, that's um, very, very helpful. And I, I also want to just note, so the Waitley Planning Board has said they did not need to do a new site plan review, correct? That's correct. Okay. And you're going to 
uh, maintain the community host agreement, the select board is fine with that. That's correct. We've already okay. been before them as well. Okay, that's great. Great. Um, I think we've been through that. Uh, again, yeah, so we're, we're here uh, asking for the renewal. We've been through that. Um, th this is a further explanation of your zoning bylaw, which we did discuss. Uh, just introducing uh, Mr. Patel, who is the owner of Nectarize. Uh, he's got experience in the industry, um, is also going to be uh, opening up um, some retailers. I think it's in Greenfield um, and in Northampton as well through Nectarize. So this is going to be sort of a regional uh, operation. Uh, there's sort of some financial benefits to being able to consolidate ownership for three three different retails and um you know he's he's looking forward to working in the community um proposed timeline here again if we were to uh, be able to move forward here we expect you know somewhere in the next couple of weeks there'll be a, an additional inspection of the facility um hopefully you know the the special permit if you're uh, able to vote on that tonight we'd receive it you know, again, somewhere in the next couple of weeks, maybe by June 10th, uh, there'll be what's called a post-final license inspection uh, by the CCC on June 15th. And then uh, somewhere around June 31, maybe a little bit later, we get what's called a commence operations designation from the Cannabis Control, Control Commission. And uh, sometimes, uh, by uh, hopefully by July 5th, uh, we could begin sales to consumers. I, I I don't want to disappoint my client. Sometimes it takes a little longer at the CCC. It could be August 1st or somewhere in there as well. But we expect it again, I think within the next couple of months, we're going to be opening here. So um, that is uh, the presentation. Uh, but if I've missed anything and you have any other further questions, we're happy to answer them. I, I have one question, and um, and I believe it was on your slide eight. You don't have to go back to it, but okay. it was also in your documentation that you that's on our website you said the only relevant change is the change of that we were talking about but are there any other changes no i mean no there aren't it's and maybe that's bad wording everything is the same other than the ownership no okay. no other changes so in effect the only thing you're asking us to do is pull up the old permit which you very generously included for us and change the name? Effectively, yes. Well, no, it, it, the permit, uh, you don't even need to change the name in the permit. It, no. It's still TV okay. free. That so, stays so the would same. would we not change the ownership? Uh, the, the ownership, yes, is, yes. is what okay. you would, the ultimate ownership would change. Instead of being Toro Verde Holdings, it's now uh, Nectarize. Nectarize, okay. Yep. Um, Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. You hear me okay? Yep. Uh, you mentioned the new owner has two other locations or three other locations in the area. Is this going to operate as a separate entity by itself, or is it just one corporation with just three different locations? So it, the other entities, uh, Nectarize owns this this entity, which is. I'll call it TV3. Uh, there's another one in Northampton, which is called that Nectarize owns through an entity called TV2. And there's another one in um, uh, Greenfield. Uh, Nectarize owns TV, TV1 effectively. Uh, so three different license holders, let's put it like that. And each of them is owned by Nectarize as, as things go forward. So they each operate on their own as separate. Uh, entities, but there is a common owner to the three. And what what's going to be the the, the difference? I, I guess other than location, I guess what's going to be the attraction for people to come to the Whaley site? Well, uh, you know what I would suggest to you: think of it. Um, you might think of it like Walgreens, okay? which, you know, it might have one in Waitley and it might have one over in Amherst and it might have one in another community. Um, you know, they, they, they will tend to uh, market to whatever the local community is. These tend to become like a local liquor store, okay? And you find out who your clientele is. And sometimes, for example, 
at this location, you might have a lot of people who have medical ailments. And so you'll probably stock your inventory a little bit more towards specific items that are medical. Maybe over in Greenfield, it's not so much that they have a particular penchant for edible items of a certain sort. So they'll all sort of find their little niche in, in, in each community, but that, that's sort of how it works. Okay, that's good to explain. Thank you. Sure. Are there any other questions from anyone in attendance? Well, I would say this, Mr. Silvan, has your client looked at the conditions that were attached to the prior permit and are they um, willing to live with those conditions? We, we have and we intend to live with those conditions, yes. Anything else? I then wonder if we should make a motion or I will make a motion to close the public portion of this hearing. I will second, second that. Thank you, Kristen. Okay. Um, all in favor of closing the public portion? Aye. 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 So at this point, we, um, the members of the board, will um, discuss our thinking, and certainly this is open to the public. Um, and I, I will start. Um, this seems very straightforward to me. The other boards in town have um, concurred that this is a legitimate change and I would vote in favor of transferring the special permit, renewing the special permit. I will second that. Okay. Fred, are you uh, voting? I'll, I'll support that as well. Okay. Yeah, but with the same conditions? Yes, with the same conditions. Essentially the permit will be as it is written with just the change that is requested. Could you briefly say what the conditions are? We would have to bring that up. Um, I don't know if you have that, Mr. Silverman, in your documentation. Yeah. If not, I can get out and, and pull it up. Let me see if I can find that. Um... Mary had 2019, sent it Fred, so I don't have it memorized. <laughs> Mary had sent it earlier. And yes, I Mary did, but it's also in the documentation. Yeah, and I'm I'm just looking on my other screen here. I've got I'm trying screen. to look. <laughs> I, I'm also gonna I'm also gonna um, take a look too. So yeah, here it is. Okay. Um, okay. Do you want to just read them, Roger? Yeah. So this was back back in the day, 2019. Board voted three to zero to grant a special permit with these conditions: one, applicant shall not commence operation until licensed by CCC. Two, even though these weren't actually numbered as such. The second one is applicant must repair and secure the iron fence on the west side of the property. Three, applicant must restore and replace the stop sign at exit on route five. And then uh, the last one, upon opening applicant must maintain a police detail to control vehicle and pedestrian traffic so long as protection of public safety shall require. That's what it said. And we are in agreement with all of those. Does that answer your question, Fred? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. So we have voted to approve this and we will um, be writing it up within the next couple of weeks and then getting it to the um, town offices where it can then be filed. Any questions? No, that's great. Thank you. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Good luck with it. Thank you. Okay, so it actually is seven o'clock and we can begin with the um, addition to 27 Masterson Road. Do we have the petitioners here with us? You do indeed. Okay. Um, I'm Amy Francis. This is my husband, Jesse Hassinger. Hello. And, Hello. and uh, my mother, Dory Urch, is also on the line. There she is. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. As well as Stephen Yoshin, our general contractor, and Mary Moore, our designer. Okay, terrific. 
Um, so we will begin. I'm, let, let me, I know people were coming in at different times. Um, I'm Deborah Carney. I'm going to be the acting chair tonight. The voting members are Kristen Vivon and Fred Orlowski. And we're also joined by our chair, Roger Lipton, who's here in as an alternate for tonight. Um, so we will have um, our secretary read the legal notice, and then you can make your presentation. So Mary, are you, there you are. <laughs> okay. Um, if you can read that notice, thank you. This is the legal notice that ran in the Greenfield Recorder newspaper on April 20th and 27th. Legal notice, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 4th, 2023 at seven o'clock p.m. <laughs> on April 10th, during need applied for a special permit to build an 1800 square foot addition to the existing house on premises located at 27 Masterson Road and owned by Dory Urch Mead and Jesse Hassinger. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom. The rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Wakeley Zoning Bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspubliknotices.org. It then gives the meeting ID and passcode, the computer link, and the phone numbers for joining the meeting. Signed, Deborah Carney, Acting Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals, April 20th and 27th, 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And um, Amy, did you notice, um, or Dory, any errors or omissions in that reading? Not, not that I know of. I think okay. that, that covered it. Okay, um, and just before we start and you you give your um, your presentation, I know you said that the building inspector had denied the permit, and was that because this is a, going to be a two family? No, actually, that's that's not. Um, I think there has been a, a little bit of confusion that perhaps tonight can can clear up. Okay. Um, but uh, our wonderful. Um, uh, general architect, uh, sorry, our wonderful general contractor, uh, Stephen, who is with us, happened to be out of the country um, while the um, the end of the process, or seemingly the end of the process with the um, building inspector was happening. So I was having conversations with him. Okay. And of course, I'm not <laughs> as well versed as to, um, you know, the finer details of what to call what. Um, but this is a single family family home that we're just adding on to. So it is attached to the home. Um, we're, we're a one family, you know, um, uh, unit, myself, my husband and, and my mom, Dory, and we're hoping to live intergenerationally as um, my mother ages um, and, and as we age too, uh, to just have a mutually beneficial um, place of residence. Well, the only reason I ask is that if it's not, it, I just assumed because you mentioned the building inspector that it was being designated as a two family, but if it is a single family, mm -hmm. then you don't need a special permit. However, is, is the addition, um, did the building inspector actually deny you a, a building permit? That's what, that's what I understand. So when I was on the phone with him in, I think it was the end of February or the very beginning of March, uh -huh. um, I, <laughs> I even asked him um, straight out. I said, you know, um, he said, okay, I, I'm going to have to deny this and it's going to have to go to the zoning board of the appeals. Okay. And I said, oh, okay. Um, you know, he said, this is a normal part of the process. Like, this is just what happens. And I said, okay, is there, you know, kind of off the record, like, is there any reason why we wouldn't be able to, to build? And he said, no, not that I can see, like, they're, you know, like, this is just part of how the process goes um, to, to, to what this is. So 
maybe we are in the in the wrong place, but I well, I think, no, um, I I I still have some questions, and and I'm I, I'm sure my fellow board members do as well. But I if if and, you do you have a copy, and and fellow board members, please join in here on page seven of in terms of our um, table of uses. We can see that a single family detached dwelling is allowed by right in in certainly the zone that you're in, mm -hmm. but a two family detached dwelling does require a special permit. So in in your plans, um, is it it's is it an actual separate? I mean, could it be a separate living space, separate kitchen, separate bathroom? So there are gonna yeah there are gonna yeah. be two kitchens okay. um but the entire building is going to have the same water electricity septic utilities it is fully attached um you know as as the spaces and we're um the entire living space for the mm -hmm. house will not exceed four bedrooms as is allowable by you know where where we are and the and what the septic system can can handle and and all of that yeah. so yeah well i mean roger maybe you you feel free to chime in here it seems like going for the special permit is certainly a good thing to do because there might be um a time in the future when you sell the house and it becomes a two family it certainly is set up for that um i know that's not your plan <laughs> But at least this would, you know, this would be um, the other thing that my other question too was that um, on the on the plan that you submitted, I didn't see the lot dimensions. You're you are aware of the setbacks and frontages and all of that, correct? Yes, we are. And and again, this is you know this is a single family home that we're just wanting to expand. So we're we're not looking for it to be a a two um, a two family dwelling or or however else that is quantified um, because it is just a yeah please go ahead Kristen no, I have a question there there already is a second kitchen in there in the basement right yes I, which we plan to um, switch switch out we're not going to have that be in use any longer so you're you're planning to build out the back. I know there's like, is there five acres there? I know it's pretty, it's, it's a- No, it's a little, it's a little over three acres. Um, three acres. If you, if you look at, uh, if you look it up on Zillow, <laughs> you can see the, you can see the home and then you can see the garage and the garage is what we're planning to, we're not expanding the footprint of the garage at all. We're just using that as our footprint um, to build and, and go from there. You're building off the back of the garage? Uh, no, we're literally transforming the garage into a living space. Oh, okay. Do you want me but, to bring up yeah. the, the diagram? Would that be helpful for me to share your diagram? That, that would be wonderful if you want to oh. go ahead and do that. Yeah. Yes, let me just go and get that. Thank you. Can I jump in, Deborah, and ask a question? Please. So, does anybody have a copy of a letter from the building inspector denying your application? I have not received that. Um, perhaps if I like logged on to the uh, to the website where the you know um, intercourse happened, you know the, where where we had. Would you do that, Amy uh, and Roger? I just so that. you know, this afternoon I did phone Amy Lavalley and ask her to check our CBA <clears throat> mailbox to see if we did have a denial from the building inspector. But Amy did not get back to me. Yes, um, because we often get um, a courtesy copy. And so when were you denied approximately, Ms. Francis? Yeah, so again, um, it was kind of like just in time to not be able to be with you for the previous meeting. So it was like right at the end of February or beginning of March, I believe. All right. So well over a month ago, maybe two months yes. ago. So yeah. Mary or anybody else has our... <laughs> This may sound silly, but it's a very small town. Has anybody checked our mail in the last two months? <laughs> I did within the last two two months, but it was quite a while ago. So, okay. so just to let you all know, I don't know if perhaps I'll have screen sharing privileges and I could show you this, but 
Yes, I can give that to you right now. Okay, great. One second, let me just. Yep. It just said, it doesn't say deny, the status says waiting for additional info. Oh, Which, okay, you now, you now can share the screen. Uh, Jesse, can you help me? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. No, take your time, that's fine. Great. Uh, great, and so I'm gonna share, yep, that one. What is it that we're looking at, please? We're looking at um, the, interface the the website that's the interface where we applied for the permit um okay yeah are you able to see this now yes i, I can see it okay, and okay we do see waiting for additional information yeah yeah so it says residential building permit waiting for additional info but he did tell me really clearly over the phone that he was that this was just part of the process that he was denying it and that then i would go through the CBA and then we would. Well, okay, so there's something called an accessory apartment, which uh, does require a special permit. Did he use anything like that terminology? I, that honestly, I'm so sorry. It, you know, I, I I clearly remember parts of the conversation, but it being you know a good two months ago, um, and again, me me just not being really fluent <laughs> in, in all of the terminology, I don't recall that. Um, yeah, and it might have been again, you know, that I just um we've never built a house before <laughs> or like built, you know, an addition or, or done anything like this previously. So I um so I don't you know. Are you are you gonna have more than eight hundred square feet of living space in the new area? The um yes, it is going to be more than eight hundred square square feet is what we are planning on. Um, but again, it is just an addition to the single family, you know. Um, single family home and it's clearly I don't know if if I if I stop sharing which I'll do now um and Deborah if you perhaps yes, want to bring up the, bring that up. the image yeah it'll just show you really clearly how it's the same home okay what I'm going to find is yours this is Thank your you. pdf okay can people see the pdf that I'm bringing up yes yeah okay so I'm just going to skip yeah, so down to your, to the, yep. to this. Yep. So I don't know that I can, um, I can kind of talk you through. So the. Um, well, but, but hold on a second mm -hmm. before you start talking this through, if I can interject. So the accessory apartment option that could be a good one uh, in some cases, and we've approved those before, has an 800 square foot limit so if you're saying right off the bat that your proposal is more than 800 square feet we know that we cannot use the accessory apartment uh section of the bylaw so i think we have to before we start looking at dimensions figure out what their what their application really seeks um, well, well roger i was looking at page nine of our bylaw where i'm sorry not page nine page seven where what I mentioned earlier, the single family detached dwelling allowed by right, but a two family needs the special permit because it's very large. I mean, it's 1800 square feet, right? It is 1800 square feet, but also um, as I have an understanding for, you know, how houses are and everything else like this, this may seem like a, like a large home, but it's not, it's not overly big you know oh no 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 we're not we're not judging oh. the size of your home we're just looking sure. at that cutoff that roger mentioned for an accessory apartment got it versus an addition no got no it. no. as long as as long as your home no matter how big the addition is dimensionally consistent with the requirements of um that region in terms of the setback the the um mm -hmm. the the side setbacks and and the frontage um, but it's a single family home. So the frontage is the frontage, but it is, it, the addition is such that it almost has two separate dwelling units in it because it's got two kitchens, but then Kristen points out to me that it always had two kitchens. Yeah. It, it, so, yeah, so that's kind of where, where this comes in. It also, um, curiously, you know, uh, 
truly only has three bedrooms and yet had a space that was being used as a bedroom, even though it doesn't yeah. have a, it doesn't even have a door. <laughs> it kind of just opens right up into the rest of the living space. Anyway, um, but that entire that entire space is shifting just over into this addition. So again, it's still it's it's really it's just gonna be me, Jesse, and and my mom um just wanting to to live in this space. Yeah, Please can, go ahead. Just to just to insert here essentially the um space that is in the the basement right now of the current house that has the separate kitchen uh, is too small for Amy and I to move in to be able to comfortably live there. And sure. so basically what we're wanting to do is take all of the amenities in that space, meaning the kitchen and the bedroom, and just move it over into a, a, you know, a new building that mm -hmm. is based on the foundation of the garage that we will be able to live in comfortably. Yeah, and have have our own studio space and 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 living space and sure. have our cat have a ton of room to run around. <laughs> right, okay. so, how, however, that's called. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, legally, whatever that has to happen is kind of like why I guess why we're here because there's some. It's I guess in a gray enough area that yeah. the um, the building inspector didn't want to just sign off on yeah. it without another well, set of eyes, I'm assuming. So I, I just want to scroll down for a moment. This is the way, this is a picture of, it's a, this is the picture of the yeah. house now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so the addition is going to be built behind the garage? No, literally we're, we're you won't see the garage as it is anymore. Okay. So, so that that's what I'm trying to so this area here mm -hmm. becomes let me get back to that picture becomes yep. this. uh no it becomes the other side but if you scroll yeah. down one scroll it, down it, yep yep that, so yeah so that's the front that's front the front facing. so like if oh and this is the addition yes okay 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 yep and so that you know um the the hallway that adjoin the two, um, you know, we want very specifically to be able to um, to have it be one house and to be able to move, you know, through back and forth um, in that way. And also to have every, you know, again, all the water, electricity, septic, like all of that is gonna be uh, one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, we're looking we're looking into hopefully doing geothermal to have it be, you know, really wonderfully put together and everything that way. Oh, okay. So, so Roger, what are you thinking? Well, if if they were petitioning to um, have us approve a two-family dwelling, <clears throat> the bylaw requires the planning board sign off and certify um, their plans. Mm -hmm. And likewise, requires the Board of Health to certify that the septic system is suitable. Right. That we can't act until we have those documents. So, Mary, is there any planning board activity on this case? Not so far. No. Well, the, the petitioner though is 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 saying it's a one family. Yeah, I. I and 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 if it's a one family. And it meets it meets the lot dimensional requirements, even with the addition. And I just want to let me just very quickly. I'm not. I'm very confused as to why the building inspector would have denied this. Or but and yet then we see the document saying that it's pending. Mm -hmm. Well, but but so if we would approve it, it it, it would remain a one family. It, it can't be rented as a as a an additional That's house, right. which is which is I mean just to be really clear on that that is not anything that we're looking to do. Um, right. Well, right, well, you, right. you might not be looking to do it now, but in the future. Yeah, uh, it's it's just not. I, I can't imagine the future where where that would be, what we're wanting to do. My mother. Um, wherever she is on this call, um, <laughs> my mom <laughs> is, uh, 
is 74, you know, we're, we're wanting to have, um, you know, wonderful years with her mm -hmm. uh, living, living in that dwelling together. Um, so that's, you know, that's why we're wanting to do this and have it be a single family dwelling unit. Is, is there going to be a, a physical separation between the, the two families as far as the building is concerned? Because I see here you've got a walkway attaching both of them. It's, I don't know, like like two, two units, two living units attached together. And do you call that one, one, one unit, one building unit? So uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so is, is there going to be a physical separation or divide or doorway or, or partition to separate the two? It's a it's a breezeway that's going to go between the two um, the two buildings, and the reason why we're doing a breezeway on the on that second level is so that we can have access to the backyard, so that we can bring a mower down. Um, right now, there there is no access to the backyard uh, to be able to actually do any major work there um, for gardening or any you know medium sized appliances that might need to go back there. Yeah. So what we what we're our our thought, our design thought about this is to be able to access the backyard so that we can do some gardening, we can do you know some some lawn upkeep and that sort of thing. Um and, and just yeah. to just to chime in, the reason why we're doing it there is because on either side, so on the house side and then on the garage side there's a ledge okay. and and we don't want to you know um obviously building things is um is going to be a big change already but we certainly don't want to we we want to be stewards of the land that we're on we don't want to make huge major changes for for no reason um so that's that's what we're looking at there as well no. Otherwise, we would have we would have just had the entirety for for many months of us doing this planning. We had um, the what's now the breezeway entirely connected. There was no, um, you know, there was no part in between. But then we realized that how how are we going to get things to the backyard if anything ever needs maintenance in a particular way? I guess the I still have some concern of of well maybe not concerned but but deborah how is this board or, or the bylaws differentiate between uh, one family and two family house what what is the criteria we look at to differentiate between the two i mean does it have to be the same i, I don't know is, is it is it a, a family issue or is it a a, a building well, issue, what is living building issue? Okay, uh, on page 109 of our bylaws, there is a definition of a single family dwelling, a detached building containing one dwelling unit. That's a single family dwelling, one dwelling unit. Okay. Now, our petitioners are telling us that this is one dwelling unit. And and it even before their addition, there are two kitchens in in the single dwelling unit that exists there now. So uh, I know from the time this house was built, so I'm familiar with it. Um, it was built by a family that actually the wife lived upstairs with the kids and the husband lived downstairs in a kind of it's like a one bedroom walk out with the kitchen apartment. It's always been that way. Yeah. So, I don't know. But I, I guess there's, there's, and Kristen, you probably know as well as I do that there's other multifamily houses in Waitley, two, three, and four family houses. What, what is differentiates them as a, Multifamily. Okay, from the same page of definitions, a multifamily dwelling is a building containing more than two dwelling units 
and not classified as a one or two family dwelling. Right. That's a de that's a, a definition of what? It's, it's that is a multifamily dwelling. Okay. Yeah. And that's on page 108 of our zoning bylaws. I mean, it's always been classified as a one family dwelling, but there has been you know, additional living space that was set up for an unconventional family. I, yeah. I know the original people were divorced and living together. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, hmm. Roger. Roger. Well, I, I would say there's a possibility of continuing this to another hearing and asking them to obtain directly from the building inspector his written denial. I I absolutely agree on that, and and but but I also want to make sure that um, um, Amy, when you worked with your contractor and your designer, mm -hmm. that you're aware of the um, dimensional requirements, because we can't see those on this plan. And that's on page 14 of the zoning bylaws, you know, what the lot coverage is and the side yard and the front yard, does, does this addition change that lot? You know, does this violate those in any way? No, no. as no. a single family dwelling unit, it does not. No. Okay, but it, it, you could have a single family dwelling unit that's still, was in um, violation of dimensional requirements if you took up every square inch of the lot. I know that's right. not what you're doing. Got it. But, but even, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. But even, even with how we're building it and everything, no, it does not violate. Um, we, we went over this with a fine tooth comb, okay. <laughs> really trying okay. to figure, figure everything out. And it does, it does not. Um, and also I, I feel like I was so nervous that I just didn't say it and I don't want to forget. I just really want to thank all of you <laughs> for your public service and for doing this. And so I just want to want to let you know my appreciation for your work. Um, well, that, that is this. very kind of you. And we do appreciate that. And, and we want to work with everyone who comes before us. And I think Roger is 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 asking the right question, which <laughs> is. I mean, we meet again the first um, the first Thursday in June, which would give you time to get in writing from the building inspector why he denied, and we can put you on our agenda for that. If that, um, so just just to just to ask, um, I I suppose maybe <laughs> it's another it's another um, like conversation with the building inspector that perhaps a mistake was was made and maybe we didn't need to. That's a possibility. I, we can't speak to that. Only he sure. can. Okay. But if, if I'd like to know why he felt this needed a special permit, because okay. if, as Kristen says, this has always been, and I have, I'm sure Kristen is absolutely right. This has always been. <laughs> I, I took that picture they showed. Yeah, oh, no, no, I, oh, I know. So <laughs> I mean, that's, that is the beauty of having people on the board who really know the town backwards and forwards. Um, <laughs> if it's always been designed with these, you that's know, great. With these configurations, and you're presenting it as a as a single family dwelling, right. it shouldn't have been denied. So there's something he saw okay. that we need to know. Okay. Yeah, and it yeah, would also help communication. If you're coming back, it would also help to improve your your plan, your perimeter plan, to see allow us to see the. The full three acres, where the house sits on those three acres, right. how far it is from each of the boundaries, okay. how, the, how the addition impacts upon those boundaries. Right. The, okay. the, the, what I'm trying to say. Roger. Has yeah, Roger's cutting out. Moment. I, I have a, I don't want to speak for him, but we we do need to see that you that even with this addition in the prior hearing you know, why, why are you asking us for it now and um by the same token we need to know why we're acting and approving something because there's a certain bureaucratic element if the building inspector is supposed to do his job and approve things uh, that are 
capable of being approved, he should do those and not just shoot them over to the uh, zoning board of appeals, make you pay a, a filing fee and all those things. Right. So okay. we're trying to keep keep our um, our system intact with the knowledge that there are others going to be filing in the, in the future as they as they always do. So we just have to know why we're acting in a certain case. Great. And and Roger, we did we did miss um like kind of a middle section of what you were speaking about, but I, I assume that you were talking about you you were saying something about having, you know, um an understanding of where the building and the addition sit in terms of the property lines and such, if we did need to come back in front of you. Yeah, that's, that's what that's well stated. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. Yeah. Could, could I ask the, the petitioner? How do you know your addition here is is uh, your well your septic system can handle your addition here? How, how do you know that? If you had a Title Five inspection, or somebody said your system is capable of having more bedrooms, how do you know that? So it's actually so the the whole thing is that we're we're not adding a bedroom. Um, there. The room that is used as a bedroom, but it's actually not because it doesn't have a closet and um, and it doesn't even have, again, like it doesn't even have a door. It just opens um, out into the living space in a very open way. Um, that is that entire, you know, um, uh, somewhat separate living area is just going to be put into the addition area so we're not we're not adding any bedrooms um we're not adding kitchen space we're just moving what we have now to a different space and then the space that had the bedroom which was never a bedroom and like the kitchen um is going to become a uh, studio workspace for pottery for uh, my mom's pottery which she loves to do um oh, go ahead but nobody has come, or you haven't asked Board of Health or anybody or or a uh, septic company to come and do an inspection of your system to see if it's if what's there today is adequate. Because because I understand what you're saying about changing the rooms and the functions, but for for septic design. My knowledge is that doesn't matter if it was built as a bedroom, it, regardless of whether you're using it as a bedroom or storage or whatever, it's still called a bedroom. Yeah. So, so the septic system that we have, we have the full plans of the septic system, and I believe it was updated. Well, the the building itself, I think, was um, built in 1993, which you know, 20 years ago, but still um, feels more recent than <laughs> a lot of a lot of the homes around here, excuse me, 30 years ago. But we have the septic system, we have the entire plans of that and everything. And so we know exactly where it is on the property. Um, we know, you know, for where we're building the addition, um, that it has plenty of space, uh, you know, between that and the other. Yeah. And Jesse the to. size of the septic system is definitely able to uh, withstand the additional um, you know, room and uh, occupancy that we're looking into. Yeah. We haven't had anybody come out to do an assessment because the information that we got, um, that we have, the paperwork that we have is- For the plans For and the everything. plans, everyone that we've talked to about that, including our, um, you know, our, our general contractor here and um, our designer have, have all said that it's well within the- the, the size that's the capacity yeah. needed yeah okay well, that's, that, that's good to know I, I guess that's helpful information rather than I guess your own viewpoint I guess but uh, well it seems like we should continue the hearing yeah. until our the our first Thursday in June um which would may be I, uh, may I interrupt and just ask if if the building inspector you know, through miscommunication or whatever might have happened, if the building inspector says, oh, you know, okay, I'll just approve <laughs> the permit, um, then do we need to come back in front of you all in June? I I don't, I think you would- No, just, you would withdraw right? your application. Right. Okay, I just want to, I just want to, 
just for my own sense of how these things work, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. No, that, that you just, as Roger said, you withdraw and um, just send the ZBA an email, but we will, you know, because we know you, you don't know this at this moment, we'll, we'll certainly put you on our agenda for June 1st. Okay. Um, and so what we're looking for is a written explanation from the building inspector. If he denies it, why is he denying it? And if he says, oh, you know, I made a mistake, then just let us know. <laughs> okay, bless you. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you all so very much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. So what is happening here? Okay. What was the date, Deborah, for the, the next? June 1. June okay. 1, Mary, is the first Thursday. Thank you. Okay. Okay, yes. David, okay. did you want to jump in with something before we? No, I think that. No, I think that that's fine. I think, you know, it was a mistake on the building inspector's part. And once we clear that up, that'll work fine. Okay. All right, so we are ready to begin our third and final hearing. And um, Ms. Bull, you are here as, and you can present. So um, I don't know when you came in. So just to reintroduce ourselves, I'm Deborah Carney. I'm going to be the acting chair tonight. The voting members will be Kristen Vivon and Fred Orlowski, but our chair, Roger Lipton, is here as an alternate. And um, we'll ask our secretary, uh, Mary, to read the legal notice and then you can make your presentation. This is the legal notice that ran in the recorder newspaper of Greenfield on April 20th and 27th. Legal notice Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 4th, 2023 at 7.20 p.m. Um, on April 12th, Allison Bull apprised, applied for a special permit to operate an educational recreational beginner horseback riding camp for children ages 6 to 12 at Sweet River Farm LLC on premises located at 64 River Road and owned by Allison Bull and Annie Sexauer. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom the rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect, and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Waitley Zoning Bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. Yeah, the notice then gives the meeting ID, passcode, computer link code, and the phone numbers in order to join the meeting. And it's signed Deborah Carney, Acting Chair, the Zoning Board of Appeals, April 20th and 27th, 2023. The run date's in the newspaper. So, Ms. Bull, did you notice any errors or omissions in that notice? No, that was correct. Okay. So, would you like to um, let us know what you want to do? And if you would like, um, I don't know if you want to share your screen and show us your plan, or if you'd like me to go to the documents and do so. Um, either way is fine. Um, it might be easier for me to be able to continue seeing you if you share your screen. Okay. Let me... Is let me just go out for a moment and okay i'm going to need to get back to where we were and okay um this is your application now can everyone see that yes Okay, but this is just your application. I didn't know if you had a, a plan that you wanted to show us or anything like that. 
Um, I, I think there was another attachment that just had a general letter that explained. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and please let me know if there's anything else. I, I'm not accustomed to doing this, but I will, you know, do my best to just introduce myself. Um, sure. Thank you so much for having me before you tonight. Um, so yes, uh, my name is Allison Bull and I am, I am the owner of Sweet River Farm, which is at 64 River Road in Waitley. Um, I've been an educator for the past 17 years and I'm currently the sixth grade teacher at Leverett Elementary School. Um, and uh, my background, I grew up on a hunter, a hunter jumper horse farm in Vermont, where my mother was a, a, a equestrian and ran a very successful horse program for over 30 years. And I spent my youth and young adulthood helping her run summer camps mm -hmm. and after school programming. Um, and now as a parent myself, um, I'm hoping to provide my own children as well as the children of Waitley and surrounding towns with an enriching summer camp experience. Um, so my experience both as an educator and with my background um, growing up on a horse farm situate me uniquely to be able to provide a really truly high quality program for, for children. Um, so we currently have a six and a half acre horse farm here. That's how we're set up. We're, we're our stables licensed with the state of Massachusetts. Um, my wife is a certified horseback riding instructor through the state of Massachusetts and is also a certified therapeutic horseback riding instructor through PATH International. Um, and so we are seeking a special permit to operate camps for children ages six to 12 on our farm. And as I stated in my application, um, you know, originally I didn't think that we needed a special permit because I, I thought that this fell under the purview of agric agricultural activity um, as defined by Massachusetts general law. But in speaking with the, um, the building inspector trying to get our certificates for the summer camp license that we're seeking, um, he thought that we might need a special permit. I, I think he's correct in that. When I was looking up in our table of uses, um, let me just find that exact page because my little sticky has fallen out. Yeah, I, I thought it might also, in terms of educational, other educational uses was the, was the chunk that it looked like it might fall under. Mm -hmm. And because yeah. it's a camp and because camps are licensed separately from other agricultural things, it seemed like that might be the reason why. Yes, the place. Can I ask what size activity are you, are you looking at here? Uh, number like number of people or horses? Sure. Or, or what's, sure. What's so the... um, for this for this year, we're seeking a a license. Uh, every year, I think we have to be licensed through um, the Board of Health, and we're seeking a license for up to eight children. Um, and I I don't anticipate we would ever exceed ten children. That's per day. Uh yeah, per week. Or per week. Yeah, so each day they would come from nine to three um, and participate in uh, riding lessons, um, chores, care of the horses, um, learning activities around um, horse health and horse husbandry, um, and then would, would leave at three o'clock. And each group of kids would come for a week and then a new group of kids would come. So just to follow up, um, I believe he probably puts you under, um, which is outdoor commercial recreation, including but not limited to camping areas and golf courses, which does, and that's on page uh, 10 of our table of uses in the zoning bylaw, and that requires a special permit. So that seems, that seems like you're in the right place and doing the right thing. Okay. Um, and we do have letters, I'm not sure it's gonna be, let me just, we do have a letter from um, J.D. Ross in support of this and also from the Waitley Agricultural uh, Commission supporting this endeavor. Now, I, we've got the abutters list. Is there anything else that anybody wants to see? I mean, we've all got the application, so I think I can probably stop the share. Okay, so anybody have questions? So you had you'd said you um, are you only offer are you looking for a special permit that would have two week long sessions each summer? This summer we're hoping to run two sessions, but um, you know if if my understanding is correct, if a special permit is issued, that then would carry forward into the future. Is that true, or is it every year I would have to seek a special permit? 
No, it, it can carry it can carry on into the future. The the issue would be the conditions under which we um, which we issue it. I.e., you said you didn't expect to have more than ten That's campers correct. at any. So ten each week, right? So you could have twenty. So. So this year we're only offering two weeks of summer camp, but I expect that we would want to expand that in the future to more weeks in the summer. Okay. And each week, what would be your maximum number? Ten. Of Ten, Ten each week. Okay. So um, you might want to be thinking as we ask more questions about what your maximum number of operational weeks would be. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming that the 10 per week would stay the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, other questions other than that from anyone? No? Okay. Um, shall I make a motion? I will make a motion then to close the public hearing. Public. I have, a, I have one question for you. Yes. <laughs> um, so because th there's also vacation, so February and April vacation, mm -hmm. um, would, would it be possible to also include those that we have the capacity to run a camp up, up to 10 children during those times also? It absolutely would. At this point, I mean, it's if you if you have the capacity to and you're getting your, your other licenses, I mean, we on the ZBA approve as to use. That's right. Like, yeah. And you know, can this can this property, can these people run this endeavor? And um, but in terms of what you're looking for, how often you want to run these week long sessions, you should let us know that. Um, and so be think so I can still close the sort of public discussion portion and you can be I thinking see. of how many weeks you're asking for. Got it. OK, um, so I make a motion to close the public portion of this hearing. Second. Second. OK, great. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Aye. Well, to me, this seems like I'll go first. I mean, this seems like a wonderful use of this property. And certainly you and your wife are very qualified to be to be um, running it. And I would certainly vote in favor, subject to some conditions that we can discuss. Yes, I, yeah, I think it's a, a good use, a good activity. And I, I guess rather than getting tied down to specific dates and weeks, which are gonna change every year. Uh, maybe give it uh, so many so many weeks in, in general or the months that it would operate would make it easier for everybody ra rather than tying it down because you not, may not know next year what weeks you want. Yeah. I, I, and to come back for another permit for the same thing is may not yeah. do anything. So I don't know if we can, as a board, say for a three-month period, you can have one a week or event a week or something. I, I don't know. I think we, as a board, can say what we <laughs> what we want. Um, Kristen, are you how, how are you voting? Yes, uh, no, I, I I agree. I mean, you know, it's I I, I don't see why we would limit it. So um, yeah, just you know, if you want to say like a broad range of it's operates from this month to this month. Or you could say up, up to X number of weeks per year. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Do you have an indoor ring, Allison? No, we don't. So you're gonna to have to be contingent on the weather? Yeah, in terms of our mounted programming, we would be contingent on the weather. Um, okay. But, you know, so, and I guess that's what falls under under camp. Although we, we might run a February camp that's not where riding isn't happening. But right, there's the barn. Right. Animal right. husbandry and care and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So how many weeks would you want to be operational? Um, I, I would think that um, there's usually about 10 weeks in the summer. And then there's those two February and April vacation weeks. So I would think uh, I would think, you know, 12 weeks. Okay, so 12, 12 weeks, 12 to 12. I mean, some some years there might be more than that, but I would think 12 weeks would be sufficient. Well, if you if we put a if we put a condition of twelve weeks, then if you go over twelve weeks at some point in the future, you would need to come back and ask to increase it. I guess my question back to you would be, um, what would be the reason for limiting the number of weeks? What would be the reason for that condition from a zoning perspective? 
That's a good question. Because you could see you could see ways in which you could offer a sort of horse, a horse adjacent experience to campers uh, throughout the year. Yeah. Well, see, part of the reason is you applied for a certain um, standard. We'll say summer is in your application. That legal notice went out to neighbors and the butters. They might say to themselves, "That's great use in the summer." But if then, without notice to the others, all of a sudden it's a year-round use, they could cry foul. We didn't have notice of that. That's so, a good point. so in a in a in a true sense, you're limited to uh, what you've asked for in your notice. Uh, now we have some leeway that I don't think up to twelve weeks is a problem. But okay. year-round, I could say someone might think that's a problem. We don't know. We don't know because they're not here. Okay. I'm I'm really glad you caught that, Roger. Thank you. Um, do you, can you can you live with twelve weeks to begin with and come back to us if you need more? Yeah. Okay. So then we'd be the condition would be that would operate. It would be operational for twelve weeks, primarily the summer, and that in each of those weeks you would have two sessions. Just one. No, right, one sessions. Okay, so each week ten students, ten campers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 12 weeks, 10 campers. Group. Allison or, or Deborah, can you pull up a, a map showing your, your property, what, where, where you're located on River Road and, and where this facility is? And so we can see kind of relation to neighbors of others. I can, where I you, can where try. You <laughs> I can try. Yes, I don't have that handy. I do note that there are no abutters here. I can tell you who my abutters are. We can see that. We got, the, right. we got your 300 foot list. Um, well, yeah, I guess we could all look at the, the assessor site and see all the abutters, but. I have Google Maps, is that sufficient? Or do you want me to try to find the actual? Um, yeah, if you have a Google map. map, that's fine. Do you want, do, let me share, let me give you the, um, opportunity to share the screen, Allison. Yeah. Okay, it's all yours. Somebody's in the chat. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. So we are here. Okay. And we directly are right next to Norse, Norse Farm, their main operation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on this side of us is um, Gabe Russo, who it used to be um, uh, Enterprise Farm. Okay. He's also across the street from us. And then the Cheslooks, Nikki Cheslooks across the street. But this doesn't have the property, the property sure. line, property map, which would have been more helpful. We 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 can see where you are though. Yeah. And I, I and I do again, you know, there are no letters here to object, and we have two two letters of support. Two of the abutters have children who um, come and ride with us frequently. Yeah. Can we make a condition that, well, given the, what, whatever, 12 weeks uh, for, say, one year, as long as no abutters have come to object or, or no, no objections to it, which would require a, a, another special permit? Um, Can we do something like that? I, I, I guess you're... Well, like Roger was alluding to, you you only sent it, you only told the abutters for two times, two weeks. I mean, two weeks versus 12 or a whole year is a big difference. Well, I, I want to go back and look at the actual application. Um, oh, I, I don't have the screen. Do you have, it looks like you have the application. I do. Let's see if I can get this moved down. 
let's see. Uh, this was what I attached to it. Is that what you want or do you want this one? This one. So we're hoping to provide an educational children age six to 12. The camp would have a maximum of eight. For this summer. Right. And then it said um, in the other in the other piece of the application that we submitted, I, I said that in the future, we might, um, we do hope to expand in future years to offer more weeks throughout the summer. Okay, so and so this we should see what was in the we should see what was in the legal notice. Yeah, can you go to let, let me? Can I have back? I'm going to yeah. take you. I'm going to take back the screen. I just dropped my mouse. Um, hang on here. Uh, okay. All right. Let me just go back. Uh, it's much it's much broader. A yes, special permit to operate an educational. Can everyone see this? Yes. Okay. A special permit to operate an educational recreational beginner horseback riding camp for children ages six to twelve at Sweet River Farm. So. Yeah, I agree. It's much broader. Yeah. So I think that with that. Actually, this is so broad <laughs> that um, any abutters who had questions about how often the camp would be running, I mean, this is open-ended. Right, they should have been here. So yeah. I think you can do up to 12 without any condition that other of the abutters come back in and object. That would make it a little cumbersome. Yes, okay. So, so Allison, our thought is then to 12 weeks, maximum 10 students per week. That's yes? Wonderful. Yes, that's okay. fine. So at this point then, if are there any other questions, any other comments from us? So I will make a motion to um, vote and I vote in favor of this project with the conditions as we've stipulated. I will vote in favor also. Okay. I will vote in favor as well. Okay, so Allison, we'll be writing this up within the next couple of weeks and filing it with um, uh, the town offices. And then, of course, there is a 20-day appeal period after it's been filed. Um, but at this point, it is approved with the condition that it is 12 weeks, 10 students per week. Thank you so very much. I very appreciate it. Oh, good luck with it. I hope it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Um, somebody has written in the chat, um, apologies for missing the earlier part of the meeting. I'm curious if the board voted on the prior matter, Toro Verde. Um, so I, who is this person? Okay. Yeah, I'll just write yes. I think it's Jared. Okay. JGB. Yep, I'm, I did put him in. Yes, we voted to approve yep. the special permit renewal. Right. I think he's next door. Okay. Um, so I know that we have just some uh, business to attend to. I don't know. Do people want like a five-minute break? I'd like to get a glass of water, if I may. That I okay? second that. Okay. All right. So we'll be right back. Um, should I, Roger, what do you think? Should I stop recording or we just, yeah. 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 Okay. So we will stop the recording now. Are we ending the meeting then? We need a vote to adjourn. Yeah. Hang on. So we are going to adjourn our hearing now are all in favor. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay.